Sticks to the wall And like the seashore Things to the sea You'll never get rid of your shadow And you'll never get rid of me Before we get finished We'll make the job We'll hit a few late spots And then a few Okay, it is a game that has launched, but we're still playing because it is the absolutely awesome Titanfall. Abby, how are you guys doing at E3? Uh, great. You know, we're showing some new stuff here. Uh, it's been really fun, you know, watching people uh, play. Um, it's been, we've been super busy since the game launched, uh, like working on updates, working on uh, the stuff we're showing here uh, in DLC. So it's like we launched, but uh, we're still going strong. So did you actually get any vacation time, any dying time after launch? Because you were ping-ponging between all these different events. Yeah, I have a lot saved up, but uh, I haven't taken time off yet. So someday, soon, soon. When you say soon, you're talking next year, right? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, just, just talk us through, I mean, the build-up, the launch and everything. You guys are trying this brand new idea for uh, the first-person sugar space. It's out there, feedback and everything. But how, how did the team feel? I mean, was, was there a sort of like, it's out? Well, I mean, it's definitely weird, like, being at E3 after remembering what E3 was like for us last year, where we're all just, like, lined up doing interviews. It's super crazy and chaotic, and it's even crazier to think that within the space of then to now, we've launched a game, and it's out three months. So, I mean, it's awesome. It, it feels great to have shipped something, um, and the reception that it's had has been awesome. So, uh, yeah, it just, um, it's just, it's been crazy. It's just, it's amazing to think of it condensed into that time period. And there's been so many tweaks and changes and updates. I mean, it almost feels like every other day you guys have got like a 100 bullet point list of what, what's new and stuff like that. I mean, is that partly uh, what you guys wanted to do, but how to cut the line to make sure the game was least in time and partly player feedback? How's it working? Um, you know, it's both. So, you know, obviously when you're trying to make a game and you've got a ship date, uh, there's a certain point where you got to go pencils down. Uh, we're, we're done here. Um, you know, but there's always things that, you know, you were working on or wanted to do or add in. And I mean, the nice thing is that we can do that, you know, relatively easily. Um, I mean, it's still a lot of work and it takes time because, uh, uh, you know, but some of it comes from fan feedback, too. You know, people want new modes. Um, you know, people want uh, some of the features like the private match features that we put in. Um, uh, some of the Titan customization, which is one of the things we're showing here. And, you know, some of those, you know, are things that we're aware of anyway because we play the game a lot, and you know, we're fans too, so we want to see that stuff. Um, and but yeah, we do hear a lot of what the community says and that feedback, and it's crazy because like, you know, you have to take that, and then you know, the design team and the coders and and art, you know, goes to work on all this stuff, and it's a lot of work. Uh, it's it's really crazy how much there is to do, you know, after a game launches. But yeah, we we have some pretty cool lists of stuff. <laughs> Was there anything that surprised you guys? I mean, obviously we got, we got hands on with lead up to launch, but afterwards with the public response, was there anything that surprised you guys? I was surprised. Um, you know, it's just, it's been really fun to watch how people play and what they do with the tools that you give them. I mean, like we constantly are looking at videos that people use, like that people post and like, like oh, you can do that, interesting, you know? <laughs> Uh, well, the cool thing is it actually does sometimes uh, help us find bugs in the game and like stuff that needs to be fixed. Because um, you're, you're basically, like, we had two million people in the beta. And what's insane about that is, like, you know, we test in a closed environment at work where there's, you know, under 100 of us. And, you know, even with that, there's still things that get through. And, and you know, we're able to fix them. And those are part of those tweaks that we do in our patch lists. And uh, it's, it's amazing how it doesn't end. <laughs> Do you have that? I mean, obviously, giving your guys heritage and everything like that, but you're, you're ready, and I assume you've went through a few months of a very vocal fan base. Where do you guys draw that line between catering to what the fans want, but at the same time going, well, to be fair, it's our game, and we think we know what's best? Sure. I mean, there are limitations to what we can do, because, um, you know, it's very easy to request features, but you know there's a team at home that needs to be working on that and updating those things. And, and a lot of them is like a lot of the things that people want is more work than we're going to be able to do for this one. Um, you know, because ultimately, like we do want to continue to make more games. Um, so you know, like and then that's really tough because it's it's hard to communicate like individually, sort of like that's such a big feature that we wouldn't be able to do it towards like. Yeah, actually, that's something that we're playing around with now. Or, 
um, you know, something that we'll look into. And we try to be pretty vocal about that kind of stuff. But um, it's definitely a mixture. Um, and, and, you know, ultimately, I trust the design team to make those decisions and to say, like, hey, this is what's really important to making this the best game that it can be. This is also what's, like, feasible, and here's the bigger features that are feasible. And, like, here's what, I'm sorry, but we, we can't do. I was saying about that, how are you guys approaching, like, DLC drops? Obviously, uh, Expedition's out and everything, but is the process thinking, right, we have to have, like, every couple of months a new, bigger DLC drop to keep, keep the interest up, to keep people active? So uh, right now what we've been doing is these uh, client updates that come around the time that our map packs are dropping. So those are all paid, um, you know, and it's three maps per pack. But what we do along with them is free updates for everyone. And that includes stuff like the new modes and, and all the stuff that we're showing here. Um, and we try to get them as close as possible. Um, I, that's also just a production thing. Uh, it's easier for us to all at once say, here you go. Um, and we've been pretty good with cadence on those. There are changes that we can make on the server side, and we do. Um, but, you know, we want to keep fans, even if they didn't pay for, you know, new maps or anything, having new things to do in the game, having new stuff to play around with, and keeping the experience fresh for them as well. Okay, well, let's talk about what you have here. What are you guys showing yeah. on the booth? So, the main thing that we're showing is a new mode called Mark for Death. Uh, a player, you know, 6v6, a player on each side is uh, chosen, and they have to escape, and your team has to kill the enemy player and protect your own. Once one of those marks is killed, the team that killed them gets a point, and a new person's chosen. And if you're chosen, you get like a head start, <laughs> so you start running. Um, but it ends up in these really cool like cat and mouse chases, and um, it's definitely an awesome way to explore the maps in the game. So how, how does that work out? So you're, both teams dropped in either side of the map, and it's a thing, just basically try and get to that guy. Yeah, it'll say like, you know, you're marked, and, and that's how it starts, but once those dynamics start shifting and you're in different places in the map, it sort of changes where those battles are, and like, and then, you know, I save my Titan for when I get marked, and then it's like, all right, bring it. Is, is a reason for that, I mean, I'm assuming you guys had this planned out way before launch, but is a reason for that to try and, like you said, actually get people seeing maybe areas of the map that they really haven't explored before, because I assume you're looking at player data and working out where those pockets are and maybe where people aren't going to. Yeah, I mean, I think the design team, you know, considers a lot of that stuff. And also, you know, we're playing with tons of different modes at the studio. Sometimes it works, sometimes they don't. Um, you know, but we, we play and everybody gives feedback and talks about what's good and what's not. And um, there's, but we definitely notice things like that where it's like, hey, I ended up spending all this time over here just because it was a good place to try to hide. <laughs> and Titan customization. What, what is that? Yeah, so uh, we have these decals um, that you're going to be able to place on your Titan, uh, and there's challenges that unlock them. So they work retroactively uh, for the most part. There's a couple things that we didn't track before that we're tracking for these now. Uh, but if so, if you've already done the work, you've got your decals, you're ready to go. Penny Arcade designed a really cool one for us. And um, they'll show up on your Titan uh, when you're in a match. And like, so, you know, pi if a pilot's rodeo on you, he's going to see, you know, oh, you got the, uh, you got the 50 gooser kills, you're hardcore. Because um, that's one of the, the things that we're putting in there as well. This will also retroactively add achievements to the last DLC that we did. Um, but yeah, the, the Titan decals are a lot of fun, and it's, it's nice to kind of have some extra challenges to unlock. Uh, there's one for uh, killing a member of the respawn dev team. Uh, although if you kill that and somebody kills you, then it'll it'll spread. So yeah. Be on a specific exactly. time, yeah. Yeah, and we added in some new uh, 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 Titan cockpit voices. Okay, no. It's, done, it's been a critical hit for Xbox One. There's other platforms out there, and I'm sure you're being asked this every single interview. So I don't even need to ask the question. What's the latest? Uh, there's, there's no latest. <laughs> Same answer I keep giving you guys. OK, OK. Well, what's, what's the roadmap for you guys? I mean, once you wrap up here at E3, straight back to the studios and just carry on? Yeah, I mean, we're still working on lots of updates. We're still uh, testing out a lot of things internally. Um, and uh, there's more work to be done. I mean, you know, DLC is, it takes time too. So yeah, straight back into it. When you, that's what happens when you work in multiplayer. <laughs> so basically we'll be seeing you here same place next year talking about this. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't, mean, I didn't mean to depress you there. <laughs> no, I mean, I look, I love coming to E3. Yeah. I think it's a lot of fun and it's nice to see what everybody else is doing. So um, hey, maybe we'll get a quiet year, be able to check out some games. I can go finally go play Evolve. We can sneak you out here if you want. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> all right, all right, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's just yeah. Cut, 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 cut the interview. It's not, not, that, not that Vince is watching right now. No, no, no. We, we, can we sneak out and play Evolve? Hmm? Can we sneak out and play Evolve? Sneak what? We want to sneak out and play Evolve. Oh, with yeah. 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 All right, cool. Awesome. Right. All right, cool. We're all heading that way.
Uh, thanks very much for talking to us. Have a great evening. You're really welcome. It was nice to speak to you again. We'll wind up at Nexus and maybe outpost.